Welcome to ADP Training, YouTube's automotive technology channel. In this channel, you'll learn all kinds of auto repair secrets, how your automobile works, and how to diagnose it. Okay, well, welcome to another video. Um, in this video, we are going to discuss the relationship between dwell and RPM, um, which is pretty much frequency. So, um, uh, anyhow, most of the uh, problems related to um, ignition systems have to do with uh, carbon tracking. Now, in this video, just to show you uh, what it looks like, we're going to use the Zapper Industrial um, Ignition Coil Tester. Uh, so, again, carbon tracking. Carbon tracking, it's an elusive um, effect that happens on ignition parts, and it's hard, very hard to see. Um, usually, it's accompanied by cracks, uh, especially around the boots, as you're going to see on um, in one of our photographs here. So anyhow, so um, just very briefly, we're not going to go into carbon tracking or anything like that. We're just going to go into the relationship between uh, dwell and RPM. But these two, together with the zapper, uh, can actually identify um, carbon tracking, which are extremely um, problematic uh, when diagnosing uh, misfire problems. Oftentimes, you could, you actually replace the parts, you replace the boots, replace the spark plugs, and everything, and and but the carbon is still inside the hole uh, where the spark plug goes at, and it cre it causes problem for some reason. The carbon is a very good conductor of uh, voltage, and um, so again. Um, this is just a way to uh, uh, bring out the um, using the zapper and um, actuating the dwell on the RPM or the frequency to bring out the issues with the ignition parts. So on screen, uh, you can see how we set up the zapper. It's a very simple tool. It's, it's got, has one button and two knobs, one for the dwell and one for the RPM or the frequency. Uh, so uh, it just goes to um, it, the only thing you have to watch out is you have to ground uh, the coils when you when you put them on the if you're going to test them on that platform it, the unit comes with that platform that you see there uh, this is a test platform so it's really it's seen a lot of use over the years so uh, but you know the one when you buy the unit if you buy it, it you're going to get a brand new uh, platform so anyhow it's a metal platform you have to ground that is very very important because if you uh, if it zaps uh, the high voltage is just going to go, it goes to ground. If you don't have it grounded, it's, it's going to go everywhere. Following, we're going to start with the uh, 0.5 millisecond. That's half a millisecond or 500 microseconds. That's the lowest setting or, or the, the narrowest, uh, it's very narrow uh, pulse width. So we're going to start with, we're going to start with that. And this is what it looks like, as, as you've seen on screen. And you're, you're going to see it actually being actuated now. Um, um, we're going to show you how to do it on, on the uh, by working the knobs, and then we're going to show you the waveform to see what it looks like. Uh, it is it is important that you do uh, that you mess around with the dwell because what it does, it, it especially at the the low settings at 0 0.5, 0 0.6, all the way to one millisecond, it brings out uh, a lot of defective components. So this is the relationship. At higher RPM, it's even you're, you're stressing the system to the max. So Oftentimes, this will do point, point 0.5 at maximum 2000 RPM. Uh, that'll, that'll bring out anything you know that's, that's defective on, on any ignition component. So, the relationship for testing uh, equipment and uh, equipment parts uh, is that uh, where you go into uh, and of course, you go into the low settings in the in the dwell and you go into the high setting in the frequency in the RPM. On top of that, spraying a little bit of Windex or water and vinegar uh, would definitely create a conduit, an easy conduit, especially through those carbon trackings um, or cracks, very minute microscopic cracks pretty much that happens in a, in a lot of, even new parts, you know, it, it happens. So by, low, uh, by going to a very short uh, uh, pulse width and a very high RPM, not necessarily all the time, but you, you'll be able to bring out uh, and using uh, Windex or water and vinegar, uh, you'll be able to bring out uh, any defective issues with the uh, ignitions. Very quick, we're also going to see, as you can see, how we could connect. There is a yellow lead uh, the, going out of the, uh, the zapper, and this is, allows you to uh, get the waveform for the actual signal 
the control signal. And this is also the, the wire that you're going to use if you want to control um, internal um, igniters. So there's a lot of coils that you've seen them, three, four wires, and the actual uh, ignition module, the igniter, it's inside. So this is the wire that you're going to use to trigger that particular um, those 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 types of units. In such cases, you're not going to use the high tension. The, the, I mean, the the high current wires that you that you see um, being connected to the to the ignition coils. You're just going to need power and ground uh, that's already there with the connector. Somehow you got to tap into that wire, that that igniter wire, and then this is you know the the wire coming from the ECM. Uh, and this is how you're going to actuate these systems. Again, in the sapper, what we call frequency adjustment, it's really RPM, uh, and on right under, right below the knob, you you actually actually see a small RPM. It says RPM in there, and it goes from roughly between 800 to 2,000 RPM. Again, imagine you're pretty much testing the coil at mo probably you know the most common range. Uh, when it comes to automotive uh, operation, so you're going from you know 0.5 milliseconds or 500 microseconds, which is really low. That's pretty low for an for for, for a regular coil. Uh, some of the new coils go even lower than that, but especially most coils don't really go that low. Uh, you you do have uh, a lot of the coils these days. They actually they're triple. Uh, you have a triple pulse uh, that started out with four many many years ago. Uh, but they they're not intended that they just the triple pulses it pulses usually at, at idle but anyhow so you go between 0.5 uh, all the way to uh, two uh, milliseconds on the coil uh, or on the dwell well again just in, in resume we pretty much when you go into the very short um, dwell uh, settings you're st you're stressing out the system some coils cannot go that low so you have to be mindful of especially the older cars uh, but for the most part, you know, you go if you go right around one millisecond, you know, point A uh, for the old coils, you'll be okay. And if, if you work around, you know, mess around with the RPM, uh, with the frequency, and that'll stress out the system. Uh, some systems, you know, they you can go again that low on the, on the dwell, but that's fine. Um, you just do whatever you have to do. The 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 actual unit will actually you, you'll see uh, when the coil starts stressing out. Spray a little Windex or um, water and vinegar, uh, and then that's pretty much it. Anyhow, this was a short video um, on the relationship between dwell and frequency and how you can... And by the way, a lot of these systems nowadays, no, no system nowadays, everything is controlled by computers. So this particular unit you can actually bring out. You, you could do whatever the computer does, you know, only at your fingertips pretty much. So... So anyhow, um, this uh, has been a very, uh, very short video uh, about dwell and uh, frequency, RPM. Uh, so uh, thank you for watching. Okay, everyone, welcome to another video. Um, in this video, we are going to talk about analyzing the um, ignition coil current waveform. Before we go into the video, we just want to thank everybody that's uh, has participating in one of our tool shows. Uh, uh, within the past year or so, uh, just letting you know that we do um, equipment and tool shows uh, throughout the country. Uh, just keep you know keep up with the website so that you know where we're going to be at. Here, as you can see, this, these are some of our showings uh, when, when we go to the show. So um, again, you know, you're welcome to uh, come to one of our shows. Thank you. Now, the coil that we're going to uh, analyze in this particular case, it's a, it's an Audi VW Audi coil with the internal and internal uh, igniter. This is a coil on plug unit. Uh, so everything that you're going to see in the video is related to this particular coil. As you can see on the diagram, uh, pin number one is the power, pin numbers uh, two and four is the ground, and pin number three is the trigger that comes from the ECM. And this is the one that this is the one that's going to be actuated by the zapper unit that you're going to see here. It is important when doing diagnostics, electronic di diagnostics like this, to uh, look at your connector. And this is the connector uh, from the from the manufacturer, from the VW Audi um, uh, box. Uh, again, it says the same thing that we said before. But once once you've seen the diagram and the connector shape, as you saw before, then it's easy, as you can see here, to um, uh, interpret the, the pinout. Uh, in this particular case, we're lucky because it, the pins are engraved right on the uh, on the plastic connector. But it's not always like that. Now on screen, uh, you can see uh, the zapper. 
um, in operation. It's a very simple unit. It just has one button, and it's got two knobs uh, at the bottom. Uh, one controls the RPM, and the other one controls the dwell, which is the coil pulse width. In other words, how wide or narrow uh, the ECM, this, in this case, is the zapper, how wide is the pulse going to be, which is very, very important. And also by controlling the, uh, the RPM, you can stress the coil to its max. Um, as you, you'll see later on, uh, it's, it's got two uh, rods, um, which pretty much you can spread them apart or, or narrow. So, and that way you can also control the stressing of the, of the ignition coil. This particular unit, the sapper, can stress the coil to its max. And when I say that, I, I mean it. It's, it was designed from the ground up, ground up to, to be very sturdy, very strong. The electronics are, you, can, you name it, you can do whatever you want to them, uh, to this particular unit. And, it's, uh, and, and, and you can do whatever you want to the coil and to stress it out. Following, you're going to see how we um, uh, connect the, um, the clamp on amp probe. Uh, to the positive of the ignition, uh, you can also do the negative, but the negative is going to be the one that's pulsing. So you don't you want to just go into a steady uh, positive uh, cable uh, wire, you know, for for the coil. Uh, you're better off. And then um, pretty much uh, the next uh, step is it's just to analyze uh, the, uh, the the waveform. As you can see, the ignition waveform is is a slanted uh, waveform, and this is this signifies a perfect ignition coil. So basically what you're looking for, it's this particular, and this is the same in any coil, in any car, in any brand, you name it, doesn't really matter. If you have a shorter coil, it's going to look like, as you're going to see following uh, in the next uh, frame. Uh, so this is a perfect ignition coil. There is nothing bad about this, you know. Uh, now, what this means uh, is that the uh, magnetic field around the ignition coil is expanding uh, the way it should be. So it is, it's not a sudden expansion, it's not a sudden, it's, there's no shorting, there's no short in the ignition coil. So this is telling you that this expand, this is, this is a visual diagnostic, so it's very easy to do. Uh, all you gotta do is just clamp on around the, um, uh, and especially ignition coils, where they range uh, anywhere between four to eight or nine amps. So you got plenty of juice in there. It, the magnetic field is pretty strong ar around the wire. So it's, it's very easy to capture this uh, ignition waveform. And again, uh, you're looking for a slanted uh, um, waveform. It, this is the current buildup um, or the magnetic field buildup inside the ignition coil. So you're looking for this particular shape. You're more or less you're looking for a shape, which is, makes it very e easy to do a visual inspection. This next frame shows you what a shorted ignition coil looks like. In this particular ignition coil, there's no spark. You're going to have a dead cylinder, uh, probably flooding. And in, in today's engines, the ECM, um, once it sees a problem like this, it actually cuts pulsation to the injector. And then you think it's the injector and it's not. Uh, you have a problem with the coil, with the ignition coil. Uh, in this particular case, the car was generating a misfire code uh, for this particular cil cylinder. Um, and so it after that, it killed the injector uh, pulsation, and it pretty much that that was pretty much it, you know. So, but but the proper procedure to diagnose this particular uh, problem is to uh, clamp on around the 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 positive wire for the ignition. No major disassembly to do. You can clamp clamp on anywhere. It doesn't have to be right at the. Uh, it could be right at the fuse, uh, and we do have something called a diffuse speaker, which allows you to remove the fuse and just connect our fuse speaker in there. The fuse speaker will pretty much take the place of the clamp on Ampro so that you don't have to do uh, disassembly. You just go into the fuse, disconnect the fuse, plug it in, the fuse for the ignition coils. Plug it in and then that's it. You connect that, the fuse speaker goes right into your uh, graphene multimeter as you see here. So again, this particular type of diagnostics is uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, you don't have to, you don't really have to in, 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 do much, interpret the waveform. Uh, just set the, uh, the scope into a proper um, a frequency range, which it, you could probably set it to uh, um, uh, 5 milliamps per division is probably enough. Most coils trigger at uh, around uh, 5 milliamps is probably too, too much. So maybe 1 milliamp per division. So a lot of coils trigger between uh, anywhere between 2.5 
to uh, probably a maximum of four or five uh, milliamps. Uh, some of them do, you know, go a little bit wider than that, but it's it's not really common. Uh, but anyhow, so this is a uh, it's a very straightforward uh, forward way uh, to um, to do uh, an, an ignition coil, regardless of the coil. It could be coil on plug, it could be uh, the packs, you know, the coil packs or the old-fashioned coils. It doesn't really matter. This is a straightforward way, and it's 100%. Once you see this, th that little vertical line going up and down like that at the beginning of the uh, of the ignition coil, uh, waveform, that coil is shorted. You know, th that's it. That's pretty much it. Um, a long time ago, I, I had a, a, a case, a car that was presenting the same problem, and we, I replaced the coils, and just same same deal. So I said, "What is going on here?" And it ended up it was an old it was an old timer, an old uh, Toyota a Supra, uh, that had a uh, the tachometer. And in those days, it was a magnetic tachometer, and it was connected to the ignition coil, uh, and that it was shorted, and that's pretty much what it was. So it, it took me a while to figure it out, but I, I knew there was something else connected to the circuit. But but you know the end result is pretty it, it's pretty much the same. Uh, igni short a uh, short in the primary of the ignition coil would cause this particular waveform. Well, everybody, I appreciate um, you being uh, with us. I'm um, pretty much uh, thank you for watching. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another video. In today's video, we are going to show you how to test. Um, a coil unplug um, with an internal igniter, uh, ignition coil. Now on screen, uh, you can see a coil unplug um, uh, unit with an internal igniter. Now they look exactly the same as the uh, coil unplug units that do not have an internal igniter. The reason, the, the way you know is that uh, if it has an internal igniter, it has at least three terminals. Uh, if it doesn't, then it's it's got two terminals, just the power and the pulsating ground. Uh, this is not one of those, but by the way, this we're not going to test a regular coil um, on this video. So again, uh, those with internal igniter, uh, I'm going to show that later on on a um, on a diagram here, um, have uh, at least three terminals. Now on screen, it's a typical transistor driver that's built in, into these coils. Uh, you have a transistor, you have a couple of resistors, uh, uh, a few capacitors so, so you have a little bit of a circuitry inside these coils um, and again they also have a heat sink inside uh, these coils again uh, they pretty much they, the ignition module is built into the coils these are very common um, today these days pretty much almost everybody is using uh, coils with internal igniters now on screen we are going to show you um, a diagram of a um, coil unplug unit with that internal igniter and we're showing you the pinout of what a typical um, coil unplug with internal igniter looks like. Uh, usually, not always, but more than 90% of the time, the center pin is, this, is the, uh, uh, the actuator, the, the, the trigger wire. So this is the one coming from the ECM. Okay, now then then you have at, at either end, either or, it could be like you see on screen or it could be in, in reverse um, uh, of what you see right now. You have power straight to positive through a fuse uh, on a fuse box um, and then you have uh, battery negative uh, ground. Okay, now, so these coils, again, two of the terminals are connected straight to the battery or straight to power and ground. Uh, the center terminal uh, is the trigger. Uh, sometimes this, the trigger is at the edge. It's one of the uh, terminals at the opposite uh, each, each either either end of the uh, connector. So it doesn't. It's not always in the middle. So be mindful of this if you're testing a unit and you don't know exactly uh, what the pinout, because you could actually you could destroy the unit if you inject power in the wrong uh, in the wrong way. Next, we're showing you a small diagram a typical diagram this is this is for what's inside these types of coils as i said before this is a simplified diagram but it, it gives you the idea you have inside a transistor connected to the primary of the coil this is the one that's going to pulsate okay from the outside uh, the base of this transistor in the in the center here it's the actual trigger and this is the one that's going to be connected to the ecm in this particular case we're going to connect that to the sapper um, ignition coil tester uh, and then the primary the voltage um, induced in this primary coil 
uh, is actually it's the one that actually produces uh, it steps up the voltage uh, to at least 20,000 volts uh, and that's this is the one that's going to go to the spark uh, it's going to give you the spark it's going to go to the spark plugs next we're showing you the um, um, where we're unpacking the zapper not unpacking but sh just showing you what it looks like this is the zapper ignition coil tester you need some form of a, of a trigger uh, in order to um, uh, to test these coils and you and I know some of you are probably thinking well I could probably use this a signal generator not really you cannot do it with the signal generator it'll pulse uh, but this is the wrong way to do it and you could probably burn the the uh, the the, the transistor the, the driver inside the coil uh, because it's the pulse is not right okay these pulses have to be uh, at a maximum usually of three milliseconds and you have to be able to reduce the the, the pulse to half uh, 500 microseconds or half a millisecond you have to have the right pulse in there uh, and and again you also have to uh, have the right amplitude so we are using the zapper in this particular case we're not going to use the high output the high um, current uh, outputs that you see on the sapper that you saw before because you don't really need to do that uh, you you pretty much we're just going to use the trigger wire which is the uh, the green terminal coming out of the sapper so the sapper ignition coil tester has uh, the battery uh, um, connection the battery battery um, lead uh, it has a coil positive and then a coil negative and it also has a coil trigger wire. You do you do not use all, all these three at the same time. By the way, uh, so you're gonna if you're gonna go um, it, with an internal igniter like this one here, uh, you don't use the outputs uh, the, for the coil positive and then the coil negative. Uh, you're just gonna connect the coil as you're gonna see the, uh, later on to the battery, and then use only the trigger. Um, in this particular case, the green. Sometimes we uh, put it in yellow. Uh, the, the you know the small um, uh, terminal coming out of the uh, the wire coming out of the uh, of the zapper tester. Next, as you can see, we're turning on the uh, power supply. Um, this this is not if you're if you're doing it in a car, you're just connecting to the battery. Since we don't have a battery, uh, we're just going to do it to a power supply. Um, and then we are going to connect the zapper uh, to the battery. Uh, as soon as you connect the zapper to the battery, you're going to see the red light turn on. Uh, and that means it's ready to go. On screen now, it's is our coil. This is an actual working coil. Uh, it's not a new coil that we're just testing. Uh, we're actually testing a, a, a real coil. There's nothing wrong with this coil, uh, but we're pretty much we're showing you uh, what we did to test it. We pretty much uh, we rigged a, um, a three terminals, three wires with ter terminals going out of the coil using the uh, the original connector, which we had one laying around. This is a Nippon Denso um, coil and plug unit. These are very common. Uh, that you see them all over on, on, on Asian imports and some of the domestics. The next step, as, as you've seen, uh, is uh, to, to strap the uh, uh, the coil on plug unit to the base. You have to have a base grounded. By the way, you have to ground the base because if you have an arcing uh, um, uh, spark through the um, uh, coil uh, body, something could be cracked or it could, you could have carbon tracking in there, then that spark has to go somewhere. So it has to go to ground. So you have to ground. There is uh, that yellow wire that you see on the side there. That's how you ground. Uh, you connect that to battery ground or chassis ground. Usually try and use uh, chassis ground so as not to put a spark uh, close to the uh, to the battery. Now with the sapper, this is very very important. You can um, control the RPM uh, and you can control the dwell, which is the uh, pulse width going into the coil. That's why I said before a signal generator. Uh, it's not the right way to do it uh, because you sometimes it may give you these uh, parameters uh, but it may not and you're gonna have to fiddle with it a lot this is made for that uh, and you know the actual transistors inside in this particular case they are not using the transistor we're just using the uh, the trigger output but anyhow uh, so by controlling the RPM we can stress the coil to the max uh, this is the only way to do it. If you try to do it by hand, you're gonna maybe you're gonna see a little spark in there, but this is this is not the the way to do it. You're just gonna burn the coil. 
uh, you just that's just the way it is you know uh, and then again uh, then you have the dwell which you, you're gonna see that and you're also gonna see that the lights are gonna start flickering this is because the high um, voltage also creates a bunch of EMF uh, and as you can see if it's strong enough to mess with the light uh, and this is like an LED light that, that we're having on to do the video um, it could definitely it it could be messing with the sapper but it's not the sapper is made to take the heat uh, of all the the uh, high frequency uh, going on uh, uh, you know inside the uh, the unit because it's testing the the coil so you, it, it's definitely creating that that particular spark the coil is creating the spark but the sapper is creating the signal that creates the spark then last year we're going to show you the, the spark gapper which is part of the sapper unit uh, of the base uh, that's included with the sapper unit and the gapper you can pretty much adjust to whatever you want and this is to even stress the coil even more um, the, this unit is made for that so that you can stress the coil you could have a coil that, that's putting out a spike uh, but it's creating a problem and oftentimes you see uh, your vehicle or a customer's vehicle come back because of its misfire problem and you think uh, that it's not the coil but it is so by working the knobs in the zapper and separating these uh, uh, these rods here you can actually stress the unit uh, to the max uh, and determine if you have a good working coil and this you can do it anytime you do a um, uh, a tune-up on, on a vehicle whether it's your vehicle or you're, or you're doing it for a, re a repair shop it doesn't really matter it's it never hurts to test the coil and stress the coil and make sure that the vehicle doesn't uh, come back uh, so again uh, this is this is the best way to test ignition coils and this sapper that we have here can actually uh, can, can, can test internal uh, uh, column plug units with internal coils so as usual we, we like to thank you for tuning into our channel ADP training uh, you can also look us up on Amazon uh, we, under ADP training as well so again um, a bunch of you are, are loyal uh, viewers we Thank you, and those that are new to our channel, thank you so much uh, for tuning in, and thank you for watching. Knows it. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another video. Uh, today's video is about testing um, coil unplug ignition coils without internal igniters. Now, this particular video is also uh, good for for any other coil that's a two prong coil, which is similar in in electrical. Uh, connecting uh, connections uh, as a coil on plug unit without internal igniter see on screen we just saw a, a coil uh, with an internal igniter you the only reason why you'll know that is because it has three uh, prongs or more so if, you, if, if it's got three wires coming out of it or more uh, it's um, it has an internal igniter uh, so be mindful of that when testing now the rest of the other coils, as you can see on screen, uh, going back to the old time, this old timer that we uh, that we see here, uh, going into the um, um, pretty much anything that's that's the two prong coil, um, whatever we're going to learn here today, it's going to apply to that. Now, here on screen we we see a diagram of a typical coil on plug unit. Uh, this is a step up, uh, typical step up tran uh, transformer. Uh, that's exactly what it is. So it's got two leads, um, two prongs coming out of it. Um, now, basically, this is a no-brainer. You probably know it, you, you have two coils in. The, what you do is you usually have two coils, one inside the other. Uh, we're going to show we show you a symbol, you know, f to simplify the explanation. But it's really two coils coupled together, very close together. Uh, these coils are normally, as some of, some of you might have seen, that they're uh, full of epoxy resin inside. Uh, they take a lot of heat, and they're pretty reliable. Uh, this particular video, we're going to show uh, how to test a coil and plug unit of a Ford unit. Uh, but it doesn't really matter which uh, um, make or, or model you know we're talking about. It's pretty much the same, regardless. So it's a simple uh, step-up transformer. You have a coil winding that with um, less uh, turns than the, um, which is the primary, and then the secondary, which uh, have a uh, much a ton of, uh, of of windings. And this is what creates uh, the uh, step-up voltage. Uh, so if you have uh, a coil, usually might have 
um, anywhere between three to seven amps going in, uh, uh, but it has 20,000 volts, 45,000 vo uh, volts going out, but not at not at 10 amps, not even at one amp. So, again, uh, this is this is typical of a step-up transformer. Uh, it basically what it does is it just steps up the voltage, but not the current. It steps down the current. So voltage goes up, current goes down. Uh, that's basically you know how any uh, a step up transformer works, and this is uh, typical of uh, coil on plug units or any other coil unit uh, that use in automotive uh, um, uh, vehicles. As you can see on screen, we are uh, going to use the Zapper uh, ignition coil tester. Uh, this unit is pretty much a, uh, uh, it's a it's a it's a dedicated unit to test ignition coils. Uh, we're going to do another video uh, um, here on this channel that actually deals with testing ignition coils without using a dedicated uh, test unit. Uh, but this is important because it's uh, you could you could destroy the coil if you don't uh, use a proper signal going in. In this particular case, this unit produces the. Uh, uh, the high current si uh, uh, signal, which is not a signal, it's a driver signal uh, necessary to trigger the coil on. Um, the unit has a uh, coil positive and coil negative, as, as you um, as you can see on uh, you know on, on this video, in this clip here. Uh, you connect it to the battery. Uh, there is another little uh, wire that's used to trigger. Uh, coils with internal igniters. We have another video on that, but this particular video has to do with uh, units uh, with uh, um, external igniters or or an ignition module on the outside. We're going to use a um, uh, a power supply here in in be uh, in uh, in place of a battery uh, because we we're just doing it on we're bench testing this coil. So we simply connect the um, the zapper ignition coil tester to the uh, to the battery. In this case, the uh, uh, the power supply. Now, a word of caution here. This is, uh, as you can see on screen, um, reverse connecting, reverse polarity connecting the coil to the uh, to, to to the ignition uh, tester uh, or to to the car. It doesn't really matter. It is important. Okay, it'll it'll still trigger. It'll still give you a spike. But then you're 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 inverting the the power, and what you're going to do is you're going to go. Uh, electrons are going to flow rather than going in and this is the way it is you know electrons flow in from the spark plug inside the coil and then into ground because ground has excessive electrons some of you might disagree with me and this is just a matter of semantics you know the theory is that uh, the ground has excessive electrons so it actually uh, electrons flow to ground and this is the same as a lightning um, it actually flows. Uh, it doesn't flow from uh, top to bottom. It flows from bottom from the from the earth uh, to the sky. <laughs> anyhow, so I'll leave uh, I'll leave that up to you to research that. But anyhow, so if you reverse polarity connect the coil to the sapper, it'll still it'll still ignite. It'll still show a spike. But uh, on a car, it'll act the, the ECM would actually sense there is an issue and will uh, will give you give you a code. So even if you do it on a car. Do not reverse polarity uh, coils because you could create a problem and then you're going to see a misfire code uh, that you won't be able to get rid of it. As you can see on screen, um, we're connecting the zapper to the um, the Ford ignition coil on plug unit. Uh, it's a two-prong, uh, two-terminal uh, coil. Uh, and basically, it's a straightforward thing. We, uh, we have uh, rigged a small... Uh, connector connector pins so that we connect it to the coil negative and the coil positive of the unit. Uh, and as soon as you, th this unit has two knobs, a dwell and an RPM knob, which is a frequency knob. We can change the frequency, we can change the dwell, which is the, the pulse width uh, that goes into the, uh, into the coil. And this is why it's important uh, to have a dedicated unit uh, if you do it with any other kind of uh, with you can do it you know because this uh, this doesn't have an internal igniter uh, with any other unit you have to have high current going out of the unit to do it uh, but anyhow um, it, it, it basically what it is is just you're triggering the coil at the right uh, signal if the pulse width is right and the frequency is too high you'll burn the coil um, this unit will not let you do that it's just made that way uh, so basically you have to have the right pulse width, which is a dwell, 
at a specific frequency and with this unit you can actually stress test uh, the ignition coil to its max um, and you can you know there's no uh, uh, danger of uh, burning the coil uh, there is a gapper a spark gapper that you can see on screen and this is this is also used to stress test the coil you can separate the rods the, the two rods that you see there you can move them um, and split them apart um, an inch or e even if you want to go higher than that you're, you'll be stressing the coil quite a bit uh, but it's uh, an inch is enough. If you want to go higher than that, it'll 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 definitely gap. It'll it'll jump the gap. But that's how you stress the coil. Uh, so basically, it's a whole it's a dedicated unit for stressing coils. But basically, it's a straightforward thing, you know, uh, testing uh, coils uh, with w with a zapper. Uh, and, and these type of coil, of coil plug units, uh, they're two pronged. They don't don't have an internal igniter, so there's no there's no driver transistor inside. As usual, we'll, um, we'd like to thank you for tuning in to our channel, ADP Training. Uh, you can look us up, uh, look our products on Amazon uh, by doing a search on ADP Training as well. That's our brand name. Uh, so anyhow, um, uh, we thank you for, being, uh, for tuning in and uh, thank you for watching. Hello everybody and welcome to another video. Uh, today's video is uh, about how to trigger um, a coil and plug uh, coils that have an internal igniter or internal driver. The first thing we're going to do is uh, set up the uh, the coil uh, on our test bed, um, which is a metal base that comes with the zapper um, ignition coil tester. As you can see here, we have three wires, which is uh, these coils have usually a power, a ground, uh, and a trigger wire. And some of them have a um, a feedback back to the um, to the computer, so that it uh, pretty much tells the computer uh, the um, um, how the uh, the spark it's it's being affected. So here on screen, uh, it's a it's a very um, basic. Uh, Simplify the wiring diagram uh, for the coil connector, and uh, as you can see, you have the 12 volt uh, switch power. If, you know, for, from the ignition switch, you have a coil logic trigger, which is the one that gets the um, uh, the square wave that's coming from the. In this case, we're going to use the zapper uh, to be able to effect uh, that trigger um, a pulse. There is no other way to do it. If you try to do this with a uh, by touching or jumping with a test light or something like that, it may you may spark it, but may be able to spark, but that's not going to tell you whether the coil is good or bad. So you have to have the proper uh, pulse at this, the the right dwell or the right pulse width. And then the other two wires are the uh, the two grounds. Uh, one the uh, one ground is the main ground for the coil, and the other one is the signal ground. Basically, what we did, uh, as you can see on screen, is tied the two grounds together, which they're ground anyway, so uh, they're tied together. As you can see um, on screen, uh, you can see the zapper already um, assembled and connected. Um, the zapper, it's a unit that um, we um, actually di uh, uh, designed from the ground up to be able, it, it does two things. It, it, it'll, it'll trigger ignition coils directly uh, through a, a very high current output. And it also, uh, it, it has the yellow output um, wire uh, the trigger wire to be able to trigger other coils. In other words, you can actually trigger uh, the coils with the, the internal igniter or the inter internal transistor. Just by, as you can see, by pushing a button, uh, we can get the coil uh, to trigger. Uh, we're going to go later on at the, at the end of the video into uh, the, the actual, as we always do, uh, the waveforms that actually trigger the coil. So again, you trigger these coils through the uh, igniter um, trigger um, input. Um, which is only one, uh, one, one, one Y, and you use the output of the um, zapper to effect the right pulse. Uh, you could use anything you want, uh, but this unit was made for that. But it, the, the, the important thing to remember is that you can't just touch, um, you know, the, this particular uh, terminal uh, with a test light and you, just to be able to trigger the, to trigger the, the coil. It'll, it'll zap, it'll, it'll spark. Sometimes it won't even spark. 
but basically you have to uh, be able to watch what you're doing or otherwise you burn the coil very easily so this unit actually affects uh, the RP the right RPM and the right dwell and the trigger is done right through the um, uh, right through that particular terminal that one terminal that's uh, that is the input for the trigger most of these coils operate under two milliseconds so in other words you um, um, the zapper it's variable from half a millisecond or 500 microseconds to two milliseconds which which is pretty much it, it'll cover 95 percent of uh, of your situations uh, in real life next as you can see we have a variable we're showing you the uh, how to vary the uh, the dwell and this is exactly what's uh, what would be um, the coil would be receiving and this is why it's so important to have the right trigger frequency and the right trigger dwell don't try to do this by manually touching again we'll re re repeat that many times because a lot of you do it this is not going to test anything it's just going to damage the coil so you know this you need the right frequency you need the right dwell so the frequency will be more akin to the uh, to the RPM and the dwell will be uh, the the pulse width that the coil is going to receive and it has to have it has to be fast enough because remember you have to uh, create and collapse that that the magnetic field um, in that coil to be able to produce the proper spark the next uh, clip uh, we can show you how um, how to um, regulate the RPM which is the same as a frequency um, and um, while the uh, dwell stays steady and if you watch look at the waveform uh, basically this is exactly what you're doing you're just increasing the RPM at one specific uh, dwell or pulse width uh, this is how you actually stress the coil uh, we've done other videos on testing ignition coils but this is the the first one that we've ever done that, that deals with um, uh, testing uh, coils with internal igniters Well, this has been a video uh, showing you how to test uh, uh, coil plug systems um, with internal igniters uh, using the Zapper uh, industrial uh, ignition coil tester. So um, thank you for being with us and, uh, and thank you for watching. Thank you. Bye-bye. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another video. Uh, in today's video, we are going to analyze the um, VW Audi coil unplug ignition coil uh, testing and actuating now these are four prong uh, uh, four terminal ignition coils uh, and they're found um, on a bunch of uh, VW Audi um, follow up you know you're gonna see the, uh, the, the the application list for the uh, for these coils uh, it's a long list so you know if you want to pause the video and go you know forward and backwards you know uh, uh, you're welcome to do so uh, and so the, vi the video will cover s these specific coils only. The VW Audi line also has um, the di different a bunch of different coils uh, that are not the same pinout as, as this one. Uh, but anyhow, these coils, uh, as you can see on screen, and that's the list, uh, the coverage. Uh, they're very popular, um, and they're very, very, very. They used to be very expensive. These days, they fail quite a bit. It is important to understand that they they have the igniter built in to the coil, so there is no ignition module on these vehicles. Hence the name uh, igniter built in. In this video, we are also going to touch upon the uh, control signal. This is the signal sent by the ECM um, to be able to control the spark on these coils. Um, again, we are briefly going to touch upon that control signal and explain to you how uh, it works. On screen now you can see the pin uh, the pinout for this particular coil, uh, VW, uh, VW Audi units. Uh, uh, pin number one uh, is always 12 volt uh, steady. Uh, this is probably coming from the uh, ignition switch uh, via a relay. Uh, pins number two and four are ground, 
uh, no big deal in there. They have to be grounded properly, and this is a problem with these coils. You may lose one of the grounds uh, and not the other ground, and it's it's going to give you trouble. So because of that, uh, it's not going to give you a no spark signal. So it's it's it'll it'll spark, but, but you're always going to have um, all kinds of uh, uh, misfire codes. Uh, pin number three is the trigger, and this is the signal that we're going to see next. Um, uh, yeah, we're going to analyze the signal. The trigger signal is sent from the ECM. Here in this uh, next uh, screen, we can see this the same diagram with um, the the, the um, trigger signal being, uh, you know, how it, it applies to pin number three. And then next, as you can see on screen, is the um, uh, this is the trigger s signal in actuality. This is from while we were testing uh, this particular coil. Um, in this particular signal, as if you look at it, uh, basically what we're doing here is um, changing the RPM. The on time stays the same, but the RPM is the one that's changing. And this is the, this is why we use the Zapper ignition coil tester. Uh, it's not a regular um, signal generator. As some of you have said, um, I've posted comments before that you can use a signal generator. You, you can, uh, but you're going to burn the coil. Why? Because you have uh, a set. Uh, most signal generators are 50% duty cycle. So the on time and the off time are going to be exactly the same. And if you do that, you'll never be able to get to get a three, say three millisecond on time, which is proper. One millisecond, two milliseconds, three milliseconds. Uh, ignition coils do trigger above that, but uh, I I only in certain times when you know during loaded, uh, extreme load uh, loaded conditions and, and, and things like that. So y you have to have this type of signal, which is there is a difference between the on time against the off time. Uh, in this particular case, you're seeing a bunch of different variations the, uh, of the RPM signal, and this is why this is exactly what you're seeing. The long um, part of the crest here, this is a square wave, wave signal, we're going to call it a crest. The long part, that's the off time. The little uh, small gap that you see there, that's the on time. You have to have this type of signal. If you can get a signal generator to do this, uh, most of them do not. Uh, but if you can, then you can use a signal generator. Here next, you can actually see the zapper uh, being uh, uh, um, unpacked from the uh, uh, from its uh, case. The zapper is a unit that allows you to do change dwell and frequency, as you saw, which is RPM. Okay, so by changing the dwell, you change the little gap that you saw before. Uh, you can change the on time, and by changing the RPM, you actually pack. A uh, bunch more, you know, a bunch of uh, cycles on, you know, uh, on cycles into the uh, into the signal to stress the coil to its max. Uh, the unit comes uh, labeled um, coil plus coil minus. Uh, those you're not going to use on in, in, in this particular case because you have to connect, as, as we saw before, uh, pins number one to power. 2 and 4 to ground, steady ground. You have to do that on your own with a, with a, a set of jumper cables, you know. Um, and then you apply the thin, the, the, the thin terminal that you see here in green. That's the trigger signal. You apply that uh, to pin number 3. Uh, basically, th that's, that's the way to do it. Do not connect the coil plus and coil minus uh, thinking that it's power and ground. It, it is not. It, it, this is a high current output. From the unit, uh, we get this question a lot from our customers once once they purchase the unit. Uh, so anyhow, um, and, and that's how you do. It. In this particular case, as you can see on screen, we're going to use a um, a um, voltage regulator uh, to act as a battery. So, but you do use a battery in real, you know, if you're doing it in, in the field in the shop. Uh, again, uh, we connect the unit to a uh, power. Uh, our, our, our regulated power supply and again what you have to do here on screen uh, you can see how we actually connect this is this is a different unit uh, this coil uh, for VW Audis you can also use a, a, a connector these connectors are actually cheap they're inexpensive you know you could probably pick a couple of these up for a few bucks 
if you just want to use a connector, a dedicated connector, and you don't want to do this, which you see on screen right now. Um, but, you know, it is, it's up to you. As you can see on screen, by simply uh, pushing the button and working the knobs, you can test the coil. Um, in this particular case, again, we're using the uh, trigger terminal on the sapper, uh, and basically this is what you're going to see. Uh, you're going to see a, a bunch of variations of the, of the spark. Uh, the spark gapper that you see in there, that's a base that comes with a unit. Uh, and you can actually gap uh, the two rods in there to make, to stress the coil even more. Now, these coils have one peculiarity. They have a ground. Uh, in this particular uh, sample that we have here, we remove the, 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 the metal ground that you have around the coil. But they all, they all bring a metal, piece of metal around the coil, and it's a... It's a it's a problematic, it's a real problem, because what you see, the boot, uh, sometimes it actually punctures little tiny holes, and it, it, it actually jumps the gap between the, the boot uh, and the outside ground uh, that you have on a, on a regular coil. Uh, so, uh, again, you know, these, these coils are a real source of problem, you know. Uh, it's a good design, and they're nice coils, in my opinion, uh, but uh, they do have that peculiarity you know they have a, a big ground uh, shield around the, the coil itself the coil tip uh, and the, the spark tends to gap that uh, and and show it and it causes all kinds of misfire problems and um, you name it so again this is exactly the the testing for, for the coil um, VW Audi coils um, we like to thank you for tuning in to our channel ADP training uh, ADP Training is also our brand name on Amazon if you want to look for our stuff. Uh, but, you know, basically we'd like to thank you for, for viewing and uh, thank you for watching. That's it. Hello everybody, welcome to another video. Uh, in today's video we are going to uh, uh, talk about the uh, Nissan Infinity coil on plug uh, units and how to test them. Now these units are three wire systems. Uh, in other words, they are uh, they have a power, a ground, and a trigger uh, signal. The Nissan Infinity three uh, wire coil um, coil and plug uh, units uh, they cover a whole range uh, of models uh, and a whole range of years. So uh, on screen now we can see the pinout. Um, as you can see, the power, the ground, the center pin is the ground, and the uh, looking at the uh, connector, the rightmost pin is the uh, the trigger but there's nothing special about these coils it's just like any other coil the, the one thing that differs in, in uh, uh, Nissan Toyota Honda Infinity uh, not Infinity Infinity Nissan the uh, uh, Mitsubishi is the threshold the, the signal recognition threshold and we have another video on our channel that deals with that uh, in, in, in Nissan in particular they likes to see about 5.5 volts 5 volts is okay anything above that and that's the that's a problem uh, it it does not trigger the coil so on screen now we see a representation of, of the uh, connector the actual connector uh, and the pinout like we showed before and on screen uh, as you can see follow following we can see the uh, the internal diagram uh, for the uh, for the coil itself and it, it has a uh, uh, a driver a transistor driver sometimes a Darlington pair uh, depending on the units, a Darlington pair that means two or three uh, transistors uh, together in, uh, in parallel uh, to increase the uh, current load. Uh, and that's how it connects to the, uh, the coil itself, which is everything is built into the, to these units. Uh, and, uh, and so that's how you get the spark. It is important to understand that we, in order to stress these coils, you have to open the gap uh, for the spark and this units have a gapper a spark gapper you also have to control the RPM and the dwell of these units not only the RPM but the dwell so you have to increase RPM and you have to mess around with it with, with the dwell in other words this particular units that we have it's a, it's a series of units that we actually manufacture um, they're set there's no control for for varying the dwell but it's it, it's just set uh, it, it's a plug-and-play unit so that it stresses the coil uh, probably to about 75%. Uh, we have another unit that you can actually vary 
dwell uh, and an RPM, but not the, the not these coils. And so you can actually stress these coils. It's a plug and play unit. It has the factory connector built in. Uh, it is a unit made for uh, uh, for the particular. We we actually offer six different units: uh, uh, Subaru, Toyota, uh, and that Lexus, Toyota, and Nissan. Uh, we also we also have. Um, uh, Honda, uh, Honda Acura. Uh, so you pretty much uh, strap the coil, so you can see on screen uh, on the um, on the unit itself. The spark gapper is on the side. Uh, the connector is a dedicated connector. In this particular case, a Nissan connector, so you can see on screen. Uh, and uh, uh, that's it. It's pretty much it. it it's, a, it's a self-contained unit, and it's also um, more cost-effective than the industrial unit that we uh, produce, uh, which is for high intensity. Uh, th it's more, more, more or less made for uh, um, auto parts. I want to test these coils and so on and so forth. But but these units are uh, uh, a higher value in the respect that if you don't need uh, a, a an industrial unit. Uh, this is it. Uh, so again, it puts out a nice spark as you s can see on screen. Uh, we would like to uh, uh, thank you uh, for tuning into our channel ADP Training. Uh, ADP, AD, ADP is also our brand on Amazon.com. Uh, if you want to see some of our products over there, uh, you can check them out also on our website. So anyhow, as usual, uh, we appreciate you tuning in and thank you for watching. Hello everybody and welcome to another video. In this video we are going to uh, talk about the Mercedes-Benz uh, uh, coil and plug testing, uh, a coil and plug ignition coil. Now we're also going to do a um, nice detailed but brief uh, current analysis of the, of the test that we're going to do. We're using uh, for this particular test, which is the easiest way to do it, uh, our own uh, Mercedes-Benz coil and plug, uh, Mercedes-Benz uh, uh, ignition coil um, tester pulser. And this is uh, the unit that we manufacture, that we make, and you can see it on our website, autodiagnosticsandpublishing.com. Now, so you can see on screen, this is the type of uh, Mercedes coil that uh, this particular tester works on, and this is the one that we're going to feature uh, on this video to do the, our testing. Uh, the unit comes with a dedicated uh, OEM uh, connector. Uh, so it plugs in there, so it's a plug and play unit. Uh, pretty much you plug it in, push that button, as you're going to see on the video, and that's it. That's pretty much it. It's a very uh, straightforward, and you can also uh, use the uh, current probe if you have a clamp-on unit, and everybody should have uh, either that or, or the, the unit that we have, the fuse peaker on our website. Uh, and so you can use the units uh, and to be able to test the, uh, to do the, uh, the test that we're going to do. Uh, on screen, as you can see, is the connector pin out uh, for these Mercedes Benz and these things are hard to find believe it or not um, so we have access to the uh, service manuals for all these cars and now uh, we're posting it here so that you can see with the uh, permission of from Mercedes Benz uh, anyhow uh, the, it, it, this is what the pin out looks like uh, it's a, you have the 12 pin number one 12 volt uh, 2 and 3 are ground uh, the, and then 4 it's a trigger that the unit that we have uh, creates a trigger, special trigger, and you're going to see because Mercedes-Benz uses a different trigger than uh, a lot of the other cars. Uh, so it's a very short uh, 1.3 to uh, 0.8 millisecond uh, trigger. Uh, and we're going to see that uh, briefly uh, towards the end of the video. On screen now, it's um, connecting. How do we connect the tester? And it's a very simple unit. It has one button only, and it's got an LED on and off LED. Uh, to show that you're connected to the battery. Uh, make sure that when you connect uh, the high voltage uh, connector to the bottom, to the, to the tip of the coil before you do, you connect the, the connector. Because if, if you, by any chance, uh, accidentally press the button, uh, you're going to zap yourself and you, could, you, could, you may damage the unit. Okay, so make sure you connect the tip of the coil to the unit first and then you connect the uh, the coil anyhow so uh as you can see on screen it's a very uh, it, it'll give you now this is important uh, uh, uh when testing these coils uh, that this unit is going to stress it to the max uh, so it'll stress the coil with 1.3 uh, and a millisecond and about 10 amps 
Uh, this is a function of the coil itself. That's just the way the coil is built. Okay, uh, you're just triggering the uh, the, tra the internal transistor inside the coil, and you're stressing. But but the thing of it is that you're stressing it to about 25 to 3,000 RPM. Uh, so don't press that button for a long period of time, or you're gonna you could damage the coil, not the unit, but the coil because it overheats. Uh, because remember, you're working uh, outside the uh, the car. You're stressing the coil to the max. Uh, look at the gap. It's a very big gap, which is not the same gap as the spark plug. Uh, this is a bigger gap than, than almost any spark plug you, you could see out there uh, you know, in the field. So anyhow, just don't don't press on the button for too long. Uh, uh, a few seconds, maybe 10 seconds, 20 seconds. It's okay for you to test it. You could spray the coil with uh, water. Uh, and vinegar, whatever you have to do to, to, to you know, to make the, the coil, uh, uh, because sometimes it's not the coil, it's the boot, you know, you get uh, carbon trackings and this and that, and a lot, some of these coils are expensive. Uh, not if you buy the cheapy ones, but if you buy the cheapy one, you test it with this unit, they'll probably fail, because this unit is going to really going to stress the coil, and your coil is going to come back if you, if you uh, use the cheapy units. Now on screen now we are showing you how to uh, basically uh, uh, clamp on a current uh, amp probe uh, to the, uh, uh, this is the power wire which is pin number one. You could just, you could also use the, 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 the ground wires, you know, so that's fine. It, so long as you're clamped to one of the main power cables. Uh, number one is, is pretty much, it's fine uh, for doing any test. Uh, you just, uh, uh, you're going to get a waveform of the uh, uh, ig uh, ignition current, okay? So you're going to get a, a waveform of the, of the amount of amperage going through the, this particular coil during the test. And as you can see on screen, that's a waveform capture of this, the, the particular test generated by this unit. Uh, this is a typical um, operation, uh, as you would see in, when it's installed in the car. It is just stressing the coil because of the gap and the spark gapper and because of the fact that you're stressing it to about 2500 to 3000 RPM, okay? Uh, so on screen you can see the, the, uh, the pulse width for the coil is about 1.3 milliseconds uh, and the amplitude is about 10 amps. And this is according to the, uh, uh, to the setting on our, um, on our amp probe of the clamp on that we are using and the actual and the setting that we have. Uh, so it's, it's about it's about 10 amps, um, 9.5 to 10 amps. That's a lot of amperage uh, for uh, almost any coil would draw that. But this is the problem is that it's not a problem. It's just that it's stressing the coil. So just be mindful of that. Uh, the how, how you do the test is by um, you could uh, separate the rods and do the, uh, the, the spark gap and make it wider. Uh, we don't recommend it because it's pretty much set and, and this is fine. Uh, it's already stressing the coil to, you know, 2,500 to 3,000 RPM. If you want to spray uh, some uh, um, water and vinegar around the coil, um, you, you know, you could do that too. And that's, so there's, there's a bunch of different ways that you could do that. And you don't have to clamp the coil to strap the coil uh, to the unit. Uh, if you're going to spray stuff in there, don't spray, you know, don't spray it on, on the unit because you, you don't want water to go in, in there. Anyhow, so uh, this is what the actual unit does. The, uh, uh, it stresses the coil to the max, uh, and this is exactly what you would see in the, in the car, um, operational. Normally, uh, a lot of these cars are, are now doing multi-spark, um, multi which, is, which is you're going to get per... Uh, per compression uh, or combustion cycle, you're gonna you're gonna get three to five separate pulses, a little bit shorter than this. But this is fine to stress the coil. Uh, but at least you have an idea uh, of what it is that that you're seeing uh, with this particular unit and with this particular test. Uh, it's, it's it's just about stress. You know, you're stressing. A lot of these coils are cheaper if you go online, um, and you're gonna get you're really going to get garbage uh, the, because they don't last. They just don't last. You, you put it in a car and a month after the car comes back. And this is the reason why we're making these units because there's, there's a lot of garbage out there. Uh, you're not going to get garbage if you buy it from, from the OEM. It's more expensive, of course. And some of the aftermarket ones are good too. 
Uh, they're not as cheap as the, the cheapy ones from China. And it may even be from China and may be a little bit more expensive and good quality ones. Uh, but the, 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 you know, the, the point of the matter is that the, this unit was stressed. Uh, you can actually also run other uh, tests uh, with the unit. If you see that you stop in a coil and it's not giving you 10 amps, and it's giving you like three amps, four amps. You're gonna see, you're still gonna see a spark. It's gonna be, it's not gonna be as strong as what you see on the video, uh, but it's gonna, you, it'll be a spark. But then the unit is full of uh, resistance uh, uh, spots inside the coil when during manufacturing because it's a cheap unit and then you're using cheap um, uh, um, circuitry inside and cheap uh, uh, step-up transformers and so on and so forth. And you're not gonna see 10 amps. Uh, just uh, be mindful of all that, you know, if you own a shop uh, or if you're a do-it-yourselfer, you know, this is it, you know. Anyhow, we'd like to thank you for uh, tuning in to our channel uh, on YouTube, ADP Training. Uh, you're welcome to visit our website as well, uh, autodiagnosticsandpublishing.com and, uh, and view what we have. Uh, all of you uh, tend to participate and leave comments, so we're, uh, you're welcome to do that, and we encourage you to do that and ask us questions. Even if you have a problem with your car, we'll try to answer, and we'll try to get to everybody. may not be right away, uh, but I'm definitely, I always get to everybody, okay? So anyhow, uh, we appreciate you uh, to, uh, tuning into our channel, and uh, thank you for watching. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another video. In today's video, we're going to talk about testing a Subaru coil unplug um, coil, uh, but we're also going to do, um, just to make better use of the video, we're, we're also going to do a current ramping and show you how that technique works uh, when you do it with a coil unplug uh, with the uh, igniter built into the coil. As you can see on screen, we've been using a, uh, a, current, a current probe uh, around the either the positive or the negative. It doesn't really matter. And that, that's pretty much all we're going to do. I'm going to use a scope. And we're going to use uh, our tester. The We have a Subaru uh, coil unplug tester unit that we make specifically for the Subaru um, motor cars. Uh, so it, it, they do have the factory connector. Uh, built into the tester itself. It is only good for Subaru. Uh, and look at the, if you're going to purchase this unit from our website, autodiagnosticsandpublishing.com, uh, make sure that you see the connector and you study it and make sure it's the same shape uh, of connector. So if you see that you, if, you have, if your connector has seven pins, no, this one doesn't have seven pins. I think it's a three pin uh, connector. And that's pretty much it. You know, so uh, on screen here, you can see the connector. This is the actual Subaru connector. This is what it looks like. Uh, make sure that you look at it. If it's the same, then, then it's going to work on your Subaru car. Uh, it, it's pretty much, this is a lay model uh, a unit, testing unit. So it's going to work on pretty much all the Subarus with this particular coil. If you have an older, like 90s or 80s car, it's probably not going to work. Uh, and it comes with its, um, it doesn't have, even though you see it here with a, with a plastic case, it now has a pouch, uh, just so that you know. But it looks like, like that in the same unit. Uh, following, we're also going to see, we see that um, at this point in time, we have a bunch of units. Uh, so you can see the different pinouts for the different uh, um, uh, motor vehicles that we make these uh, coil and plug connectors for. And the Subaru is on the lower uh, left-hand side. Uh, that, and that's the Subaru pinout for this, for pretty much all the Subarus with this shape connector. And the unit, as you can see, we're going to do, it has a little button in there. Uh, it is made for Subaru vehicles. Uh, it pretty much is it's a, it's a plug and play unit, by the way. You plug it into your uh, coil, and this is the beauty of it. Even if you do purchase our Zapper, which is an industrial uh, coral tester, and it's very good. The, the, the sapper is it's the best that you could possibly get. But even if you purchase the sapper, if you buy the units that, that we have for the, the vehicle specific, uh, it's going to save you lots of time too. Because you could just give it out the sapper, you need a little bit more knowledge to use it. And if you have some of your guys that they're not that knowledgeable, they're maybe uh, uh, A1 certified guys, but they have some knowledge. Uh, uh, that's fine if you if you're a do-it-yourselfer and you want to work in your own vehicle these units uh, are the best because you just if you have a Toyota you purchase the Toyota unit from us and you could test your Toyota coils 
But because if you do have a, a misfire, you're going to have, you'll never get, get rid of the misfire. So these, these units are made for uh, specific vehicles. It, they do have a coil, uh, uh, like a spark gapper on the side, as you can see. Uh, you'll be able to see it later on, and uh, pretty much uh, you can just look at the spark and you separate the, the rods, and that's how you stress the coil more or less. The, the signals that come out of these units are meant for the vehicle that you're purchasing it for. So if you buy a Subaru unit, it's, it's not going to be the same signal as a Toyota. Okay, so uh, don't try to make it work on a Toyota and change the, the connector and rig it. And, you know, because some of my guys, you know, they, my customers, they try and do that because they have, especially the DIY guys, you know, they have another car and they want it, they don't want it, you know, they don't want to buy the other unit. So, yeah, don't do that because it's not the same signal. Anyhow, so as you can see on screen, uh, we have, this is the actual signal that you're capturing with the, with the probe, you know, the current probe. Uh, and so it's a signal, that little hump that you see there, that's the coil uh, charging. And this is, this is the, the reason for this video. Uh, it basically, you know, it shows you testing the coil with our unit is very easy. Just plug and play. Connect it to the battery, connect it to the coil, look at the, at the, at the, at the spark gapper, and that's pretty much it. You know, if, it, if it'll jump the, 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 the gap, especially if you separate the rods, then you're stressing the coil to the max. Don't push that button for more than, I don't know, a minute or so, because it's really not meant for that, you know. It's not, nothing, nothing's going to happen to it. Uh, but the coil is going to overheat because you're not, it, the coil is not plugged into the car, into the, into the spark plug, remember. And it's not, it doesn't release the heat, okay? So, uh, it, probably nothing would happen, but if you go, if you're going to go, you know, more than three minutes in there, you know. So, anyhow, so this is what you're going to see. Uh, it's a, basically, and uh, as you can see on screen right now, after the video, this is what it means. The start of the hump, the beginning of the hump, this is why it's called current ramping. Because you're looking at the current ramp. This is a current ramp right now. This is a technique that you use for to test all kinds of automotive uh, components. So basically, you are looking at this beginning of the of the, uh, uh, of the of the charging cycle, okay? Uh, after that, then you're gonna, at the, at the end of the, of, the, of the hump is the end Okay, and that's where the coil charged to itself. This is why the signal has to be precisely, precisely made for the vehicle that you're testing. Uh, in other words, you, you just can't just get a, t a test light uh, and and just touch the, uh, the you know the the trigger wire. You know, you could do it and it may spike, but you're not going to test anything like that. You're really not, not going to gain any knowledge. The pulse width has to be precise otherwise it's not going to charge completely and it's not going to collapse properly you're going to over overheat the coil and you know I mean really not going to test anything remember the the uh, inject the transistor driver is inside these coils so basically you have as you can see on screen we're going to ba go back to the uh, um, to the uh, to, to the wiring diagram basically what you're doing is you are Connecting power, ground, and my unit uh, is the one that actually creates the igniter trigger uh, pulse. And that's a pulse that has to be exact, has to be precise for the vehicle that you're testing. Okay, so basically this is uh, it's pretty much it. You know, it's uh, uh, this is what you're looking for if you want to go beyond using my unit to test the coil. And say, for example, you want to you see because you could have a problem with the power of ground, okay? And if you have a power with the power of the ground feeding the coil, uh, which is, it's gonna come from a, from a relay, to, you know, for the power and from the fuse and whatever. So it's gonna jump a bunch of connectors, you know, throughout the car. And the same goes for the ground. So if you have a problem with the power of ground, you're not gonna see that. You're not gonna see this hump the, the way you're seeing it right now, okay? You're gonna see something else. And it's not going to be, you're going to be using my unit, you're going to be testing it, okay? My unit provides its own power and ground, okay? So, basically, you know, you're not going to detect a problem with a corporate department, but at least my unit is going to tell you that you don't have to replace your coil. Your coil is fine, okay? And so, basically, you would have to concentrate on something else, which are the three wires that you're, you, again, that you see on screen right now, which is 
power, ground, going to the coil from the car, not from my unit, from the car, okay, and the trigger wire. So if you have a, a pulse on the trigger wire and the, you just see a little square wave in there, uh, then you, you concentrate on the power and ground and you use my stress loading test light. It's a unit that we have to test the power and the ground units. And that'll tell you whether you have a power problem or a ground problem. And you would have to go to my website, uh, autodiagnosticsandpublishing.com, and, and look at the unit. Because it's a nice unit. It's a very inexpensive unit that we have to test power and ground. Because remember, you're testing the coil with my unit. It, it tells you that it's fine. It's sparking, beautiful. You're, uh, you're, you're stressing the coil. And then, then you have to say to yourself, okay, so what, what's my problem then? Assuming that you, that, you, that you replace the coil, maybe you don't want to replace it, you just want to know what's wrong with the car before you replace anything. That's really the idea, okay? And then, so it could be power or ground or the trigger coming from the, from the ECM itself, okay? So again, uh, you know, this is uh, pretty much uh, the way uh, it works, you know? Uh, these are my two units, and we have a bunch of different units on my website, autodiagnosticsandpublishing.com. Uh, so take a look at it and uh, we'd like to uh, thank you and uh, stress that you should subscribe to uh, our channel uh, ADP training here on YouTube and also to our website autodiagnosticsandpublishing.com uh, and uh, again you know we you're welcome to post comments and if you have an issue with your card I'll try to get to it it's not going to be right away but I'll try I get to everybody okay and so but we'd like to thank you for uh, for uh, watching our videos and again thank you for watching Hello everybody and welcome to another video. In today's video we are going to um, uh, explain how the uh, Toyota uh, Lexus coil unplug coil ignition system works and how to test it. We're also going to be exposing the um, uh, our Toyota Lexus coil unplug tester pulser uh, unit. Um, later on we're going uh, to show you how to um, actually it's a very simple it's a very simple unit. Uh, this video, video explains and it's going to talk about the Toyota 4 um, wire uh, coil system. Uh, this uh, particular, I'm going to explain exactly wh why they, what each wire is for and what each line does. And, it, and it, this is very important uh, from a diagnostic point of view. On screen here you can see a connector for the, uh, uh, the 4 uh, wire, the 4 prong uh, Toyota ignition coil. Now Toyota uh, uses the uh, the four uh, wire uh, uh, ignition coil, uh, and each each of these are labeled on screen as you as you can see. Um, pin number one is 12 volts. Uh, that's uh, it comes from either a relay or the ignition switch. Uh, then you have the IGF. That's a feedback. That's the ignition feedback signal. This is important because the unit we uh, we show you here actually tests the IGF signal as well. You could have a coil that's firing perfect, uh, but the IGF line is, is shot. Uh, so it, it, it's important because you never get rid of the, that misfire code. Uh, then you have the IGT, that's a trigger signal, no brainer. This is um, coming from the ECM. Uh, the IGF goes to the ECM, the IGT comes from the ECM. And this, this is what triggers the coil on and off. And the last pin number four here, it's ground. Uh, and this is a ground uh, uh, supplied more than likely uh, in, in from what I've seen in 90% of the cases right from the from the ECM itself and the ECM gets that ground uh, from uh, from the chassis from the from the ECM ground on screen here we can see how the uh, ECM actually um, actuates the, the relay and the relay is the one that provides that power through the power pin uh, that we uh, that we saw before uh, it, so basically, usually it comes from a relay. If not, it comes it comes from the depending on the year. It comes from right from the ignition switch uh, through through a fuse. Uh, we, we, this is a simplified diagram. Now the Toyota coil and plug ignition tester that we're going to show here provides all these things: uh, the ground, the power, uh, the IGF. Um, it receives an IGF signal. It shows it on on an LED on the side of the, of the unit I'm going to show you and it also provides the IGT with a dedicated OEM Toyota connector. This on screen is the unit with the coil strapped to it. Uh, on the side you see the, uh, the, uh, the spark gapper uh, to test the actual spark. You could test the coil outside, you could test it in the car too, you don't have to test it with the, with the size uh, spark gapper. 
Another very important feature uh, of this unit, of this testing unit, and, and of the Toyota uh, Lexus coil system is that is the IGF, as we said before. The IGF is a, is a feedback uh, signal sent uh, to the ECM. Now, all these IGF uh, lines, uh, the wires are tied together. They're not separate. In other words, uh, the, the ECM is not going to see IGF number one, number two, no, no, no. You, you, it's going to have an IGT, a trigger on the one, two, three, and four, but not the IGF. So the feedback, they're all tied together. Uh, the ECM has a synchronization a, from the crank, uh, the crank. It knows which cylinder is actually firing. So depending on, on, the, on the cylinder that's, uh, that's firing, the coil that's actually firing, the, the, the ECM knows. If it's missing an IGF signal, it knows exactly which one it is. But they're all tied together. And this is important because when you're doing a tune-up and you don't know if the coil is good or bad, you could have a coil that's firing 100%. This is, this is common on, on Toyotas and Lexus. Uh, and, but the IGF line is shot and you don't know. The only way to, te uh, to tell that is by uh, uh, connecting a, a, an oscilloscope uh, to the unit. Uh, and then, you know, most of you don't have an oscilloscope or don't want to use it or it's, it's too much. With this, you, the testing unit that, that we're showing you, and this is our testing unit, you can actually tell if the IGF signal is working. I'm going to show you that on, on the video. It's got a small LED, and it tells you if it's firing. If you if you if you're receiving, uh, if the if the coil it's outputting not only a spark but an IGF signal. On screen now are th are all th all these signals put together, uh, the IGT, IGF, and the firing, uh, which is the green one on the bottom. Um, this is exactly what you would see. Uh, from an oscilloscope point of view. Again, uh, we're trying with this unit to uh, make it plug and play so that you don't have to deal with, with uh, grabbing an oscilloscope. Uh, the IGT in on screen is the blue line, the blue trace uh, from the scope. The IGF is the red one. Now, if you look at the IGF signal, it, it is actually a small pulse, uh, a ground pulse. Uh, that's why it's, it goes down. Uh, so it goes down like that momentarily. Uh, it actually uh, grounds uh, the IGF signal, okay, and that's how, that's how it tells the ECM that you have a pulse. Uh, again, this this circuit in within inside uh, the uh, the um, the coil uh, could be uh, defective, and it could could be um, um, uh, temporarily uh, shot. You know, it could it could be an, an inter intermittent, or it could be never is you know not giving you an IGF signal but there there's no way, there's no other way to tell uh, other than having an oscilloscope okay and then uh, with this unit that we had that, that we just uh, introduced into the market uh, it, it's uh, you don't need you don't need a scope you just you have an LED light uh, you could do it on your own with um, um, I guess if you have uh, one of those LED uh, test lights but I, I would say this, uh, this IGF pulse is so sh short uh, that most of these LEDs, uh, test lights, do, do not, you know, pick that up. So uh, our unit is made, the circuitry inside the, our unit is made for that so that you can actually pick up the, uh, uh, the, the, the small tiny I IGF pulse ground. It's a little tiny ground, grounded pulse that, that you get from the, from the IGF uh, uh, line. So just to recap, the IGF signal momentarily grounds the pulse. Uh, the, the coil grounds the pulse to tell the ECM that we have a, uh, an ignition uh, event. Uh, the best way to see it is with a scope. Uh, our unit actually uh, detects that uh, and, and it outputs the, um, uh, the result through an LED, a small uh, signal. Here on screen, we can see the, uh, our unit in action, how it works. Uh, again, it's important because you could have a very 100% firing coil uh, with a missing IGF output uh, and if that happens uh, you're going to have all kinds of issues and you're never going to get it you, you just uh, it, it'll be a nightmare you know for you to figure it out if you're doing a quick tune-up uh, just snap one of these coils uh, look at the IGF signal uh, from the unit and you know that this the, the, you know you can see the spark and you can see the IGF so you you, you know you're 100% you can put it back and, it's a, you know, you don't have to worry about uh, diagnosing the IGF signal uh, with, a, with an oscilloscope. This unit, it's, um, uh, it's pretty much plug and play. As you can see, we're unboxing the unit here, we're unpacking it. Uh, it, it comes with uh, a side gapper, 
a spark, a spark gapper. Uh, to, it has to. You can separate it. By, by the way, you can separate the gapper um, so that it it actually jumps uh, the gap or, or and stress the coil even more. Uh, you could just leave it like that for for 99% of the cases. You don't even have to touch it. Uh, just snap the coil in there. It has a dedicated connector, uh, an original uh, Toyota Lexus connector for these coils, uh, connected to the battery, uh, and you're set pretty much. We make a bunch of uh, coil testers, uh, but this is uh, th this one in here has two LEDs on the side. Uh, one is the the red LED for on the, the on and off, telling you that it's connected to the battery, and the other one is the blue. Uh, oftentimes, you have to with your finger cover the red LED because it's too bright, so you'll be able to see that the very small pulse for from the IGF uh, LED, which is blue. When you're uh, firing the coil, try to stay away from the from the spark, of course, because otherwise you're going to get shocked. Uh, and um, it's pretty much uh, it's a it's a the whole unit is grounded too. Uh, so even if you get a spark that arcs ac ac across the uh, the coil, you're going to get it to ground. But you know, having said that, it's li like anything else, you're dealing with a with a high voltage uh, spark in there. So uh, make sure that you stay away from from that spark. As usual, we uh, we are, uh, we're exposing you. Uh, to um, automotive uh, technology stuff and knowledge. Um, we have a bunch of uh, uh, loyal uh, viewers that we always like to thank for tuning in. Uh, don't forget to click the, uh, the like uh, button uh, j just to, uh, to give us a, a thumbs up. Uh, again, uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for being with us. Um, uh, again, um, thank you for watching. only for VW Audi ignition coils, coil and plug units. Now it is important to understand that this is an OEM um, tester with uh, uh, the OEM uh, factory connector. Uh, it's a ready to go unit. You plug it in uh, straight to the coil. There's no, um, uh, you don't have to rig any, any uh, specific connectors. Everything is included. From the beginning, we try to make this unit um, uh, as plug and play as possible, so you don't have to, uh, it's ready to go. It's got a button on the top, uh, and uh, here on screen, we can see the coils uh, and the pinout that's uh, specific to this particular um, uh, VW Audi coil and plug uh, um, tester unit. It's a pulser tester. The unit comes in its carrying case, as you can see it. It comes with the, uh, like a strap-on um, uh, Velcro uh, straps in there that you can actually you strap the coil in there you're gonna see that later on in, uh, in the video uh, it's got a, a gapper a, a spark gapper so you don't have to you don't need a gapper either you can test the coil outside the, the vehicle or inside so it's up to you how do you how you want to do this if you if you test it inside you have to make sure that you flush the uh, uh, disconnect the, um, uh, the injectors uh, just crank the engine a, a few times so, so, so that you can uh, uh, exhaust all the uh, the unburned fuel uh, inside the uh, the cylinder, uh, each cylinder. Uh, that's if you want to test it inside and, and listen for the spark. As you can see on screen, the unit has only one LED, uh, the on and off LED, and one button uh, on top. Uh, and uh, the whole unit is grounded, uh, so you can pretty much grab it, and, and as you, you'll see later on in the video, uh, grab it and just push it and just test the unit, uh, uh, the different coils. Um, it is made that way so that you can stress test the coils. In other words, uh, by removing, uh, separating um, the rods here, you can actually stress the coil to its maximum. Uh, so again, uh, it is important that you do this, uh, otherwise you may be um, confronted with a uh, misfire code that you'll never get rid of if you don't stress the coil. You could test it in the engine and just listen for spark. Oftentimes, if the coil is shot, you don't even know which coil is giving you the the the, the issue, uh, and this this thing is ready to go. Uh, but again, uh, only one button. It's um, that's all you have. To, all you have to worry about, pretty much. And um, 
the gap is pretty much comes uh, set. You can actually uh, increase the gap between the rods, uh, but it's uh, oftentimes you don't even need to do that. On screen here, you see how we actually strap the um, ignition coil, the VW Audi ignition coil, um, to the unit. Um, there's an LED on the top uh, that tells you that the unit is on when you connect it to the battery. Make sure you connect to the battery. Uh, that way you power the unit and you ground the unit at the same time. Uh, and that's pretty much all you need to do. By pushing a button, you, you, uh, as you can see on screen, you see all kinds of uh, um, the spark gapper. Uh, you know, uh, it's, it's a very, it's a very uh, straightforward uh, plug and play unit. As always, we'd like to thank you for tuning in to our YouTube channel, ADP Training. Uh, ADP Training is also our brand name on Amazon. Uh, so um, we'd like to thank you for watching. Uh, uh, we'll leave you with a few images of the uh, uh, VW Audi ignition coil tester pulse unit. Uh, so again, thank you for watching. This channel is for do-it-yourselfers, as well as professional auto repair technicians. We present all the content using the latest CG animation techniques, on-hands video, and how-to, tips and techniques. We encourage you to subscribe to this channel now. Once subscribed, anytime we upload a new automotive tip, secret, or technology video, you will be notified. Finally, by subscribing, you will also be part of our weekly freebies. Yes, we're constantly giving away lots of free merchandise. Automotive Diagnostics and Publishing's Mandy Concepcion, the owner of this channel, is one of the most prolific auto technology authors on the web. At any moment in time, we may offer a free book, Kindle eBook, Android app, one of our own diagnostic equipment, or even auto repair software that runs on your PC. Subscribe now free of charge, learn lots of automotive technology secrets, and win free stuff. It doesn't get any better than that. Thanks for watching, and enjoy.